Hi guys, welcome to Rossi Audio again. Um, you probably saw my previous video about uh, power amplifiers versus uh, receivers, and um, you know how how that plays out with power and all that stuff on speakers. Um, I'm gonna try and demonstrate again and call it the caveman caveman science. Um, Another factor that is uh, often discussed in forums and groups and among peers, um, there is not um, a census or, or a consensus on this. Not everyone agrees. There is different different theories out there about how um, this thing work and if it has a, a factor or not in how. In practical life, when you play your music, and we're talking about damping factor, not everyone believes in damping factor, and most people with a little bit of brain um, know what it does. So I'm going to try and, in a simple way, call it the caveman science to demonstrate for you uh, what damping factor does. And damping factor is, in all cases, in every cases, uh, depending on your speaker, your amp, and your cables, and everything that works together. So the total damping factor that you get is a combination of that. And how it works is a combination of that. But is it better with higher damping than lower damping? Um, some people are stuck in the 70s and say, no, no, no. It's okay with 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 in damping, and that should be enough. While some people swear to having 300 dam in damping and up and I can tell you that over 30 years I have been around quite a few amplifiers um, amplifiers and receivers that have had damping factor as low as 25 and I have used them I have had amplifiers that have had damping as high as 5000 and I've used them too and yes there is a there is a difference when it comes to practical terms and practical use on paper anyone can say that no it doesn't matter it doesn't have any effect on the sound or on the speaker or anything like that but it does in practical terms when you use it it does let me try here now we have the, the famous 2x4 with the same nails I added some few na more nails and um, I've used some rubber bands where I have taped some coins to each rubber band. Each coin represents um, a diameter of a woofer because damping factor is more or less for the woofer. So we have over here, we have a little 8 inch woofer. On the bottom here we have a 12 inch. We have a, a 10 inch and sorry, 8 inch 10 inch, 12 inch, 15 inch, and the, at the last we have a big 18 inch. So that's what we're going to try here now. So let's say you have um, a receiver or an amplifier with a low damping factor rating. Let's say it's below 100. And when you start to play and the bass hits and the woofer starts to move, the damping factor is the factor who decides how fast it breaks or stops or controls the woofer, the movement of the woofer. If you have low damping, you will see this. This is what you see. The woofer is flapping, flapping and moving around and it's not like sudden stops and stuff like that. And it doesn't matter what size of woofer that you have, but I just did all of them just to have something to show. So if you go over to the 10 inch, it's the same thing there. And then we can move over to the 12 inch. And the reason I have made a little bigger space between these nails is because the 12 inch normally moves further than an 8 and um, a 10 so this is what happens if you have a, a, an amplifier or a receiver with 
low damping factor. We can go to the 12 inch. And it, it just keeps moving way after the signal is have hit. The 18 inch, here I have made a smaller space, bigger and double um, band. And the reason for this is to show we, when you have higher damping, this one has a higher damping. So the movement is not as big and as, as long as the other ones. So it's that there is more control to it compared to this one again compared to this one again compared to this one again and then we can put the little 8 inch back on so in, in caveman theory you can say that the more rubber bands that I add on increases and gets a higher damping. So if you have fewer rubber bands, the coin will bounce around a lot more than if you had more rubber bands to create more resistance, to create more control of the movement of the coin. So why is it important to have an amplifier with, you say this is crazy. Why is it important to have an amplifier with good damping factor and a rating, a high rating of damping factor? It's, it's as easy as this. When a bass hit, when a bass note hit, and you know they hit constantly. It's not like it hits and then it takes a break for two or three minutes. It hits and it hits and it hits and it hits. And if you don't have an amplifier that can control the woofer movement after and be in between and before the next signal is, is hitting the woofer, you are running the risk of damaging the, the, the woofer itself. So higher damping factor is better than a lower one. Oh, there you play off. And that's what happens. If you have an um, amplifier with low damping factor that can't control it, this is what happens to your woofer. It gets all out of alignment and you can get the voice call damage, you can get surround damage and all kinds of stuff but um, you don't want this you want this so the less movement you have after a signal have hit the better it is you want the cone and the woofer to move long enough far enough and to reproduce the tones that are being sent to it but you also want the amplifier to stop the cone when the signal is done before the new signal comes so damping factor guys is just as important as wattage power supply size in the amplifier it, i want to say that damping factor is if you plan on playing loud and a lot of power i want to say the damping factor is the um, maybe the most important factor in your amplifier and um, just as important as power so i hope this little caveman experiment uh, showed you a little bit what damping factor can do and what it can't do and what it will, what the result will be if you have an amplifier with low damping factor and you are pushing your speakers to the limit uh, you run the risk of damage.